How is customer experience different from customer service? Find out in today's episode, plus how to make sure that each of your customers knows all of the services your company offers so they can buy them from you, which will maximize their average customer lifetime value. Plus how to implement an excellent customer experience using automation so it doesn't actually cost a ton of time and money. We weren't getting the leads that I knew we could. We weren't getting the right leads. What started happening is that our, our leads are more qualified. Our sales have probably gone up by about 10 to 15% a year. We're going to increase our sales volume by a million dollars in a year. Hey everyone, Jack Joss is here and welcome to the Landscaper's Guide. This podcast is all about serving the snow and landscape industry with inspiring ideas for sales, marketing, and leadership. And today I interview Clifton Muckenfoos, who is a really interesting person who built up and sold an exterior remodeling company prior to buying a boat and doing all these interesting things. And I hope you enjoy this conversation, and if you do, make sure you subscribe at landscapersguide.com slash podcast so you never miss an episode. All right, everyone, welcome back to the Landscapers Guide. Today, I'm excited to interview Clifton Muckenfoos, who is the founder and CEO of Building Raving Fans and the director of coaching at Winrate Coaching. Clifton, welcome to the Landscapers Guide. Hey, Jack, thanks for that introduction. I'm excited to be here and uh, be with you today and your audience. Yeah, so we we share a mutual client, Scott Kalinius from Forever Green Landscape, who has been on this show before, and he's a big fan. Tell us a little bit, what is, what's some of the work that you're doing with Scott, and what else didn't I say in my introduction that people should know about you? You know, I've, I've been working with Scott for about a year now, <clears throat> and to watch him sort of transition uh, into really a CEO role, um, you know, his mindset has is, is really changed from the beginning of our engagement. He's, you know, delegating more and, um, you know, really investing back into his team. And he's really, really become hyper-focused on culture and growing uh, his team. And these are all things that that we started working on back in January of this year. You know, our clients, Jack, at, at Winray Consulting, as part of the Champion Circle, we we start with foundational principles, right? That's core values, that's mission, vision, your why. Why does a business owner get up every single day and do what he or she does? And so really to, to see Scott embrace that and make the investments into his team, uh, it's just been, you know, he's been a, a great case study uh, for us. And he speaks very highly of you, but, um, you know, what, what you, uh, may not have, uh, you know, mentioned there in that intro is, you know, I grew up in, in rural South Carolina, very small town. Uh, my grandparents, you know, did a lot of farming. My granddad was a small business owner as well. Uh, I went to Clemson university, which is also in South Carolina. I uh, got a marketing communications degree and an advertising minor there worked in corporate America for, a period of time uh, along the uh, before that uh, made made some some pretty bad decisions in life as most or a lot of young people do those decisions however did provide me with a perspective to appreciate everything uh, that I have now but you know after graduating moved to Atlanta Georgia worked in a, a few different industries in IT worked in the valet parking industry uh, and then fast forward a few years uh, most recently in 2010, uh, I started an exterior remodeling company in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, and as we spoke earlier, mm -hmm. my journey into construction is is really different than than most, right? Most people, or a lot of people, rather, are on the tools. They're they're you know they're working. They're either hanging siding or installing windows or just doing the trade themselves that natural next step is I'm going to start a business. Whereas myself, I knew zero about the trades. I knew zero about construction. And in fact, um, I'm okay admitting, I still don't know how to read, you know, a tape measure five H two. I just don't, that's just not how my brain works. But, but what I'm, what I've been told I'm, I'm good at Jack. And, and I think your, your listeners uh, will probably appreciate this is really how to deploy 
you know, tactical empathy uh, with homeowners. So we were a predominantly residential uh, remodeling company. And, you know, the thing I excelled at is, is really understanding what was causing that homeowner pain, why I was there across the kitchen table. And when I can get someone to relay to me what the true reason for their pain is, if we have a solution for that, then we can, we can, we can ease that pain. And so uh, as a, as a new business in 2010 with, with zero dollars, really, I mean, I started my company on literally the size of a post-it note. In fact, it was three of us sitting at a table uh, at a brewery. And I asked uh, the two other gentlemen for $1,500 a piece to start that company. So 4,500 was going to be the initial startup. My one buddy, after listening to the plan, looked at us and says, you're crazy. I'm like, cool, go get yourself another beer. Uh, now I need $1,750 from you. And so we launched our company on $3,500 with a business plan on the size of a Post-it note. So as you can imagine, Jack, we had zero marketing and advertising budget. So I can remember the Ferrells there, you know, you always have these, these customers that stand out in your mind, but the Ferrells gave us our first chance. And, uh, you know, I remember knocking on that door and uh, they gave us an opportunity to have a conversation and somehow we connected. They gave us a chance. We did the install. And over the next seven to eight years, we did over 70 projects in their neighborhood. And so that's, you know, the programs that we put together and we'll probably get into some of that, but the things that we did relating to client experience and how we stayed top of mind to them, it, it, it they just couldn't forget us, right? And so their neighbors took note. They wanted the same type of experience. People will pay, you know this, Jack, I'm sure, but people will generally pay more money for a service or even a product for a better experience. Absolutely. The, the, the experience is so important, especially in something like exterior remodeling or landscaping, or some of my clients who are listening to interior remodeling. And that's where, where the experience, I think the stakes are even higher, but, but really the experience that we deliver to our customers, I believe is the reason they would pay more for our service than someone else, right? You're both going to do I mean, you need to deliver quality, right? But how you deliver quality and take care of the client is, is everything. One of the things that we do, and I know that you also do reputation management with um, building raving fans is uh, asking for client feedback. And so we, we do that along the way at the midway point is one of the areas where we ask for that feedback. And we just got a Google review from one of our clients who mentioned the experience he was having and how great it was. We haven't even finished. So I'm, I'm with you on that. And I, I believe it's key for retaining clients and earning referrals. I'm curious, you know, what, is, what is the tactical part of tactical em empathy? What do you, what do you mean by that? Yeah, I mean, just being very deliberate, right? Asking a lot of questions. You know, I think that most salespeople go into a conversation with a prospect with one thing in mind, and that is to sell them something and get as much money out of them as they can. And so tactical empathy is actually reversing that mindset and going into a conversation with how can I help this person truly help them solve their problem money aside and just asking questions. Hey, Jack, what's important to you in a commercial landscaper as, as an example, if I'm talking to a property manager, how important is it that you get weekly status reports? How do you like to be communicated with? How often? What method? So I would ask, and my team would ask these types of questions before we even talked about siding, roofing, windows, doors, landscaping, tree service enhancements. 
let's make sure that we're going to be a good fit together before we even talk about your problem, like your main problem, why you had us out. So we're going to ask a ton of questions. I mean, some of the feedback we got, Jack, and I actually love this, but some of the feedback I would get when I was selling in the home and then as I, you know, got out of out of in-home sales is, gosh, you ask a lot of questions. And that meant I was doing my job. That meant my team was doing their job. Mm -hmm. And so what I mean by tactical empathy is, is really, you know, getting involved into the emotional side of things. I like it. I, I agree with that. And it's something that we coach our team at Ramblin' Jackson on. And one of the people that I study is Dave Curlin. Have you, have you heard of Dave Curlin? He's I've heard a, that name, but I don't know much about yeah, Dave. Yeah, he wrote the the book Baseline Selling, and one of my coaches, Wayne Herring, introduced me to him, and he said that when you're selling, that it should be 70% the prospect talking and 30% you asking really great questions. And a lot of times when I'm in a sales environment, I, th I think about at the end, well, where where was I? Okay, I was at you know 40%. Maybe I need to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but I, I found that, you know, visualizing that pie graph and thinking about that and and, and you really should be asking questions. And, and also a lot of times, sometimes, and letting people know, hey, we may not even end up being a fit for what you need. And then you can still help them and also get out of there if it's not a fit for you. Because I think one of, the, one of the challenges that I find with a lot of landscapers is they feel like, they need to sell to everyone and they feel obligated because it's a referral that they need to go through with all of these conversations and maybe even creating estimates or designs even when they know it's not a fit. So do, do you ever, did you ever have that experience or, or, or do you ever find that other, you know, trades people have that experience? You know, Jack, you were, 100% on it. I remember when I first started my company uh, and then even probably two years in, you know, if somebody asked, Hey, can you do this? Our immediate response was yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Even if we knew we weren't set up for it. I mean, we executed because we found a way we were incredible problem solvers, but here's what I, I soon realized. If I tried to be everything to all people, all the time, actually, I could be of service to no one, of true service to no one. Uh, but you're exactly right. You know, I think that as business owners, you know, we work so hard to deliver that wow experience. And then we get that referral. And we're like, oh my gosh, I got to, you know, Mrs. Smith gave me that referral. You know, she's, she's put her name on, on the line here. We, we've got to help. And so what I learned is, and I actually trained some of our clients as well on this, is if you're not set up for it and you know you cannot deliver an exceptional client experience, you're doing yourself and the client a massive disservice by even having the conversation. So instead of spending time going through something you know you can't execute and you know you want to deliver, it's best to just simply say, you know what, Mrs. Smith, I greatly appreciate Mrs. Farrell's referral. And as much as I would love to help you, mm -hmm. unfortunately, we're just not set up for that. And my reputation is going to be at stake if we try that and fail. And it's just not a proposition that I'm willing to, to, to risk. I love it. You got to be willing to say no. And no is a complete sentence. Um, right. But, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, but I want to back up for just a moment. You know, you said uh, 60, 40 or 70, 30 on the speaking and questions. You know, I have found that if you ask a prospect a question and you don't have anything else to say, guess what the next best question is? Tell me more. What made you say that? What makes you feel that way? Help me understand that a little bit more. You know, I think if, if, why, why did you say that? Why do you feel well? You get five whys out, you get to the true uh, answer here. But uh, yes, I've, I've seen it happen many, many times. Uh, one thing we cannot get back 
is our most precious asset and that's time. It took me a long time to realize that, but if I know we're not a good fit, I'm not going to waste your time or ours. And in fact, in a, in a selling presentation, uh, I'm going to give the prospect permission. And it goes like this, you know, Jack, listen, as we talk today, I, I hope that we're able to solve some of your problems, but I want to give you permission that if at any point in time you feel as though we're not a good fit, I want you to raise your hand. I want you to stop me and simply let me know, Hey, I don't think we should move forward. Does that sound fair? I love it. I've never, I've never had a single prospect ever mm -hmm. say to me, Jack, no, that's not fair. Right. And so when I get their commitment that they will do that, it's perfect then to say, no, Jack, now that you feel comfortable, I also want to let you know if I also, you know, determine that we can't serve you, I'm going to mm -hmm. stop the meeting and I'm going to let you know, is that also okay with you? Do you know how much time I saved in my life by doing that? Countless hours. I, I love it. You know, that's something that um, I learned also. And I learned it. So prior to pressing record, I learned that you, like me, had some experience with door-to-door -door sales. So I'm curious, did you learn any of that in your door-to-door -door sales training? Or where did you learn about um, that method? I've You know, there's Sandler who calls it the ultimate upfront contract I, I learned from my sales manager at the dairy farm, I was a, a milkman to call it a, a verbal agreement, uh, but it's ultimately, I, you know, and I, I talked to my team about putting no on the table early. Um, I, I like it because then if it's a no, if we need to come back to it, hey, you know, earlier when I mentioned if I wasn't able to help you, I, I might need to let you know that. What I've learned is that you need a service we don't even offer. And you know, and then you could, you could build in what, whatever else you said about your reputation. And sure. so would it be okay if I, if I referred you to somebody that specializes in this and boom, now I'm out of there. I didn't blow any relationships and I've saved the time. So uh, where did you learn about, where did yeah, you learn you, about it? You, you know, um, I, before we get into that, I'm going to just address the, you know, can I, would you mind if I made a referral making a quality referral to someone mm -hmm. is actually still serving them. Right. And, but that's what I think that too many landscapers or contractors are like, I don't want to refer anybody out because, you know, um, number one, you know, they may not know that person, but you've got to go through a process of, of building a strong referral network, number one, but number two, actually making a referral is a way to serve someone. And I let them know that as well up front. But to answer your, your original question, um, I sold do my door to door sales was uh, yellow pages. Um, I don't know uh, the demographics of your audience, but most people don't know what the yellow pages are. That's the oh, original they know. search engine. Oh, they, they know. do know. Okay. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so that's <laughs> well, the original well, so, search engine. So as far as the original search engine goes, so a lot of my clients have been around and they're maybe some of them are even the second or third generation owner. And I've come to learn like one of them um, has Alpine in their name. And the reason was to rank at the top of the list in the phone book, right? So um, that's where we see, um, you know, ABC plumbing or A1, you know, landscapes or all American one, two, three <laughs> or whatever. Um, so for sure, the, the, the yellow pages yeah, that's an interesting thing. Like one of my clients, they're the owner, the founder, rather, at this point, his question was always, hey, how are the phones? That was the question. And the new owner, his son, is like, well, actually, Dad, we designed the website so the phone doesn't ring. And we schedule people online to our calendar. And it eliminates a lot of wasted phone calls. So the the phone book yeah it's amazing how much things have changed from the phone book era but but that was your that was your those were some of your experience was selling yellow pages ads to businesses yeah a absolutely and and you know um you know before i got into selling yellow pages uh, i worked in the mortgage business and um you know when i moved when i moved from florida up to raleigh north carolina in the mortgage industry uh, my girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife, you know, I moved there with her and the mortgage crisis was in full swing. We had just moved to a new market that that company, you know, shut down. And so 
I had, I looked at my girlfriend at the time and she goes, what now? New, new city. You convinced me to come here. You have no job. What now? And, and I had, I didn't know what to do, Jack, uh, but I said to myself, okay, well, cool. What are the two things that people generally hate to do? Cook and clean. So from my apartment community, I went and created some flyers from the business center and I created a cleaning business. And so it was that entry into entrepreneurship where I was able to then connect with business owners. And I really said, what's important to you in, in a janitorial service? How important is it that you have someone here? all day long in your car dealership, cleaning up to make sure that you look like, you know, a five-star dealership. So it was really, it, it was some AT&T and then it was just repetition. Yeah. I love it. Well, so tell me, tell me about delivering wow client experiences. So, um, for people listening, you know, we've talked about how, how important experience is. What are some of the ways that maybe landscape companies, can deliver a wow experience. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to you know, give you something here that I think your listeners if if they go take action on this uh, can really help them out and that's to spend some time going what I what I call going through a customer journey or mapping exercise, right? So, you know, you we've got to first have a baseline understanding that customer service is different than customer experience. Customer service is the response to an individual event. Customer service is doing what's expected. Okay. Equate customer service to manners, being polite, just doing what you should. Here's the problem. Customer service produces satisfied customers. And Jack, your, 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 your listeners and your clients need to hear this. A satisfied customer is a liability, man. Because a satisfied customer is not the one that's going to be going out and championing and being a raving fan for you. And so we've got to create exceptional customer experiences from every single touch point, mm -hmm. how they interact with you online. Do they get all of the videos and all of the information on their website up front? Mm -hmm. What's the user experience from their website? Mm -hmm. What happens when they reach out to you? Do you send them... You know, let's say, for example, it's a, it's a remodeling project and that person's interested in a siding replacement. Perhaps if they select what they're interested in, they automatically get a PDF, how to select the best siding contractor. Okay. You know, maybe it's a commercial landscape bid and they get automated PDFs and, and brochures about how to make the best selection for a commercial landscaper what questions to ask your commercial landscaper. So you're giving them all of this information up front. Okay. Then what happens after they call you? Do you have scripting or do you have multiple people answering the phone? What's that journey look like? Then, okay. How about when we set the appointment, do they get an automated email with a video from the sales rep or even better from the owner? Do they get an automated text message? What is what happens? But these are all things that can be implemented really low cost um, to send out. And then how about when you're on the way to an appointment? Contact that prospect. Hey, it's Clifton with ABC Roofing. I'm on the way or ABC Landscaping. I'm on the way to you know, your office. Uh, is there anything you'd like for me to know? Would you like for me to stop and get anything? Have you had lunch? Have you had breakfast? I know that might sound crazy to some people, but do you know how busy people are in the property management space? Sometimes they get to work and their phones are blowing up and they look at their calendar like, I got a meeting with Jack in 30 minutes. I haven't eaten a single thing, but if Jack called me on the way and said, hey, I'm on the way. Have you had breakfast? Do you need anything? I'd stop by the store. Those are things that are different. Guess what? Those are things that people remember. And then after... After you meet with them, do a demo, do a presentation. Do you send a thank you card? Every single one of our prospects got a thank you card. Now we've automated that process since because we had a lot of prospects and that was a lot of handwriting, but we've automated 
you know, the thank you cards with, with automated, automated technology and things like that with robots and stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, but do they get thank you cards? What about if they agree to do a business with you? Does someone from your client experience team pick up the phone? Hey, Jack, welcome to the family. Just want to let you know you've made an amazing decision. We can't wait to work with you. So for people listening who use something like Service Autopilot or if they even have Constant Contact or MailChimp or um, Active Campaign is the tool I use. Some of my clients use HubSpot. That that could be an automated email. And, and the video, one of the things that I love that you mentioned was the use of video. So video is something that we use personally at Ramblin' Jackson in, in our client experience. And then we're coaching our clients on doing it because especially if you sell a, a landscape design service that might take multiple months, when people get to a later phase and they forgot that they're at the plant selection phase or the material selection phase or whatever it is and the impact that can have on the timeline and a quick little video that's like, hey, we're at the plant selection phase, which means that, you know, we're going to select these plants. We need to order them. All of those little things can be templatized and automated and they're they're inexpensive. And the thank you notes, we, we, um, we do a ton of thank you notes. I'm all about it, man. So some of them are actually handwritten and they make sense to spend the time. Um, and then there are services. And I actually had a um, somebody who attended one of my events message me on Instagram. They're like, hey, dude, did 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 you write this or is this automated? And I was like, well, since you asked this, this one actually was automated. So it's it's hard to even tell in a lot of the cases. So um I, I love it. I, I love those those little touches along the way that help people feel good about working with you. Absolutely. And you know, you know, Jack, one of the things you mentioned about video, we created an experience before our, our sales team got to the house where the sales rep would send out an automated video introducing him or herself, setting expectations in advance. Hey, when I get there today, here's what we're gonna do. This is the process. And then when we got there and we did that, guess what we did? We immediately established trust. Immediately. I've, I told you what we were going to do. And now you've seen firsthand that I've executed on it. I just sent bacon to many of my clients. <laughs> Who doesn't like bacon? Right? I don't know. I don't know. If you don't, if you don't like bacon, something's up. Uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, for sure. Sending gifts and rewarding people. And um, I mean, for landscape projects, there's, I, I actually just had a newsletter article about this. There's so many obvious gifts. If you do a, an outdoor kitchen for someone, uh, one of the things I use is a wireless meat thermometer. They're a hundred bucks, right? You know, send somebody something like that. Uh, we'll put links to everything you just mentioned in the show notes, everyone. So check that out. And uh, Clifton Muckenfoos, thanks so much for coming on the show. Jack, I greatly appreciate the time. Go be great. There were so many nuggets in today's show about having a verbal agreement where you're putting no on the table and giving your client permission to tell you no and giving yourself permission to tell them no and serving people through referrals. Selling to the right customer is so important to delivering a great experience for not only the customer, but also your employees. When you're spreading your team really thin, saying yes to everyone, it can contribute to employee retention and culture problems. So say hell yes to your hell yes customers and politely refer people who are not a fit for what you do. I love that. And um, the customer experience, some of the things we, we talked about are like sending gifts or even sending emails with videos. All of these things are very helpful ideas. So thanks so much to Clifton for coming on the show. If you liked it, I hope you like this show. If you're watching it on YouTube, make sure you subscribe, leave a review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening. And subscribe at landscapersguide.com slash podcast and I'll instantly email you our top three podcast episodes that you just can't miss. My name is Jack Jostis and I look forward to talking to you next week on the Landscapers Guide.